and welcome to a virtual workshop designed and delivered by the Southern Universities Network. My name is Lucy from Itching College in Southampton and today we're going to be discussing your transition from college to university and how you can prepare for student life. So the first thing we're going to be looking at today is how will university life differ from your life now at college? One of the biggest things is that moving away from home to university can be a really, really daunting prospect, but there are certain things you can do to manage this and make it as stress-free as possible. Whether you are actually moving away from home or not, we thought it would be helpful to give you some guidance about making that transition from college to uni. Some things you may find that will change are that you will be in a new social environment, you'll have new responsibilities and you will have new ways to study. One thing that you may notice when you move to university is that the encouragement that lecturers will put on you to manage your studies more will grow. So when I say that, what I mean is that they will almost step back uh, a little bit just to help you to take control. The reason they do this is because they like to emphasise you learning the subject more on a deeper level for yourself. So while it's likely that you may find you have fewer classes and lectures, this does not mean that there is less work to do. In fact, you may find that there is more work to do. So when it comes to managing your time and your space effectively, this is really, really important because you do have less solid teaching hours and more time to research and really, really think carefully into the projects and the work that you are doing by yourself on your own time. Of course, there's so much support available at universities to help you with this, so just bear that in mind. So what does a degree actually look like? When it comes to university, so many degrees all have different looks to them. It's not like college where they have to follow a national syllabus. Universities actually put their own course structures and modules in place as they see fit for their institution. So when you're picking a university course, you might want to think about how you like to be assessed. Do you want something that's more uh, still classroom based, so lectures and things like that? Or do you want something that's more practical and hands on and relates to real world experience more? These are all things that you can start to eliminate when you're doing your university course research. Some key phrases that you might see come up are the duration of the course, um, the years, the semesters, projects, lectures, assignments, and all of those kinds of things will come into play when it comes to looking at how the course is broken up and how it's delivered. One important thing to remember is to try, no matter what degree you're on, to try and not leave any assignments or dissertations or project work to the last minute. While you are given more control with your learning, it means that um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have more free time to spend. So it's really, really important that you could even create some sort of timetable just to help you to visualize when you should be socializing and having downtime, which is really important important and when you should be studying and working hard and putting research into all of your work that you're creating. What we're quickly going to look at now is the difference between lectures and seminars. Lectures you may find in a bigger space with more students with one lecturer standing at the front and delivering their content and their presentation. It will introduce topics, key themes and ideas and they typically give you a broad range of information to familiarise you with the topic. This requires you to make lots of notes and active listening is required. Seminars you may find are often carried out in smaller groups so they are more discussion based and you may find that subgroups are issued in order to have discussions and debates on a smaller topic which is then broadened over time. This means it's a lot more um, interactive, but make sure that you prepare for seminars and always do your reading and research. 
When it comes to finances, it's all about balance. There are important things to budget for when you're at university, and yes, this does include socialising and going out. However, one thing to remember is that if the first instalment of your student loan comes in and you go out and spend it all on clothes and takeaways and maybe even drinking, this won't give you much left to feed yourself comfortably for the rest of that payment. Lots of people think university is expensive and will leave you in lots of debt. However, there are lots of ways you can cover your costs, including government tuition and maintenance loans, getting support from parents, carers, and maybe some savings if you have been saving over the previous years, applying for scholarships or bursaries if you can't get that extra support, or getting a part-time job while you study is a really, really popular option for lots of students once they have familiarised themselves with the surroundings of their university. So we're going to look at student loans now. Many people are eligible to take out a student loan for those years at university. Now repayments for your student loan will not be made until you are earning a certain amount of money per year in the job that you gain in the following years after you've graduated at university. There's quite a big myth around um, the financial side of university and many people think they can't afford it and that's really, really not the case. With this, it is all dependent on earnings that you make as an individual once you have started a job. So a big thing to remember is that repayments with university are based on how much you earn, not how much you borrow. If you're unable to pay your student loan back after 30 years, it is wiped. One tip is that if you are interested in applying for a student loan, do it as soon as you can, as this can be a lengthy process and take some time. This is done on the gov.uk website, Student Finance England platform. Always ask for support in college by tutors or any other staff for some guidance on how to do this. Some additional money tips as well. Look around for the best bank account deals that you can. If you're living on a campus university, your campus might actually have a bank on site. But there are lots of banks around the city that you may go to university who offer student bank accounts. So check out what those deals are. If you are getting a loan, it's unlikely that it will go into your bank account on the first day. So it's really important to try and have a bit of backup just to get you started. Invest in some kind of travel discount cards. There is quite a lot of support out there for student travel. Um, so you may find that you're going to and from home, especially if you're going far, this is really, really important. You might be traveling to see other friends or even family. You may have friends on different campuses, going to and from bars and restaurants. If you're, on a, if you're in a big city university, you may be getting the bus quite frequently to and from different campuses to your lectures. There are so many websites out there to help you with your university student um, finance management, such as Totem, University Days and Student Beans. Try and create some kind of budget tracking spreadsheet, just so you can keep on top of your income and your spendings, just to make sure you can see each month how much money you have left over to play around with, and if you may be um, experiencing a few financial restraints towards the end of the month, you may have to hold off on that new pair of jeans. So, we're going to take part in a quick activity now. Once I've explained, I'm going to ask you to pause the video so you can carry this out. In pairs, what you're going to do is make a list of items that you would need to take on your first day of university when you move away. Now the activity that you have just carried out is really, really useful once you've had your place confirmed because you will start to write a list of all the essential items that you may need and there are lots of things that you may have forgotten, but well done if you didn't. Things like stationery, pain relief, toilet roll, and also food as well. So another thing to remember is that um, ensuring your belongings. So if you are doing a course that requires you to maybe purchase some sort of equipment, if you're doing a really high um, sort of technology based course, you may need to be carrying around quite expensive items with you during your time at university. So check out how to do that. 
Keep up to date with your university's news and updates. Especially at the moment with everything that's going on with COVID-19, it might be really useful just to find out what's happening at your choice of university in terms of any remote learning, any kind of um, special inductions that you need to take part in, anything that's going on in Freshers' Week. Keep up to date and know how you can get involved. Most universities will guarantee accommodation in your first year. You may want to reside in the halls of residence with lots of other students all in one place, which is great for socialising. You may um, be moving to university already with friends from college and all decide to rent a house together nearby. You may want to rent privately on your own as a student and live by yourself and socialise from there. These are all really important things to consider and using the knowledge that you have from the city that you are moving to will probably determine this as well, depending on how well you know it and how familiar you are with the surroundings. A big part of moving away to university is Freshers' Week, so let's look at a few different elements of that. One of the first things that comes up quite frequently with freshers is drinking and going out. Yes, this does happen quite a lot with freshers week, but if you don't drink, that is okay. There are so many other fun things to do and you can still take part in all the activities that go on even if you don't drink. You should never feel pressurized into doing anything that you don't want to do and stay safe. Try not to go anywhere late at night when it's dark on your own. Making friends. Now this can sometimes be hard when you're moving to a new place, but try your best not to lock yourself away in your room if you can help it. Get yourself out there and try and push yourself out of your comfort zone and get talking to new people. Get to know your surroundings. Understand what's taking place in your new city or town that you're moving to and also your campus. Familiarise yourself with everything that your accommodation has to offer. What groups are there? What clubs and societies can you be a part of? There is always so much on offer when it comes to moving to university. Even in different parts of the big city, if that's where you're going, there'll be loads of stuff on for freshers and some really great student discounts. Make sure you familiarise yourself with the support services that are available as well. Um, there are lots of careers teams, there's lots of mental health and wellbeing support. Even the clubs and societies that you go and take part in will have some kind of support element to them. Everything you need will be on offer at the university that you go to. So some top tips to finish up on adjusting to student life. Get yourself a planner. As I said before, you will be managing your own time and your own budget. So it would be good if you could put these two things together and have something that you can keep coming back to and editing just to make sure you're on track with your assignments and your money. This enables you to have the best possible time that you can at university because you won't be stressing about these things, which can take up a lot of energy and time. Do your work rather than later. This is some advice that often gets ignored. So make sure that as soon as assignments and projects are handed out, you are starting or making a start on them by doing some research and making notes. Do not overwork yourself. It is impossible to be a part of um, a voluntary group, a society, have a part-time job and complete all of your studies in one go. Try and think about what your um, priorities and your values are and what you need the most. Try to keep some kind of routine. If you've had a big heavy night out before, you don't want to be staying in bed till three o'clock the next day. This is okay every now and then and every so often, but just try not to make a habit of it. Try and get yourself out, get some food and get some fresh air. Try to eat well, your body will thank you. Sometimes you can eat too much of a bad thing and that does have a, an adverse effect on your mood and your energy, even your skin and how you feel. Try to incorporate lots of nutritious ingredients in your diet, such, such as fruits, vegetables and plenty of water. And finally, do what makes you happy. Don't feel pressurised into doing anything you don't want to do. University is one of the best experiences of your life, so enjoy it, do what makes you happy, and take control of everything that you do whilst you're there. Okay, thank you so much for listening. I hope you found it useful. For more information, all you need to do is reach out to the Southern Universities Network.